All right, so I'm going to be doing a review from uh, a comic called Good Boy. Uh, this was sent to me by my friend Chris. Chris, thank you once again. And yeah, so Good Boy has been a comic that I've heard a lot about. Uh, this was written by uh, Garrett Gunn and Christina Blanche. Blanche? I'm, I hope I said that last name right. Artwork by Kit Wallace. Um, yeah. And uh, the comic comes from Source Point Press. Uh, I also have Volume 2. Chris managed to send me that too. And uh, Good Boy has been a comic that I have heard nothing but, well, good things about. But I never got to read it. Um, and look at, the, like, I want to show you, like, who's reviewed this comic so far and said great things about it. Awesome books by awesome people. Tom King said that. Uh, supporting this amazing looking comic book. James Tinian. Quote from James Tinian. Um, I love this book and so will you, says Gail Simone. Uh, I'm I'm so goddamn pissed that I didn't think of this first. A quote from Donny Cates. So this comic are has got some, uh, shall we say, uh, good approval already. Like we already have some good approval. Uh, it already has like a seal of approval that has uh, gotten it some some uh, word of mouth, shall we say. So. The comic basically, as you can tell from the cover already, this is like an anthropomorphized version of John Wick. Like, that's really... The comic really plays in the whole John Wick thing, honestly. Like, it doesn't even try to hide that it's a John Wick parody. Essentially, the comic follows a dog named Flint, who, after his owner is brutally murdered, goes on a quest to avenge his owner, and he goes from being just a dog to suddenly he can just stand up and shoot guns. And you may be thinking, why does that, it, let, that doesn't make any sense. Why does that suddenly have to be a thing? Why, do, uh, you know, why anything? This comic even says in the first issue, sh it, it has a quote where they're like, yeah, some, uh, like, um, there's a fight in a gas station and a cop interviewing this uh, woman who witnessed it. He's like, oh yeah, sure, a dog, just a uh, giant dog man just started shooting everybody. And then out of, and then her replies, you know, we live in a world of anthropomorphized animals. In this uni in this literary universe, it's almost it, like it's exactly like the writers going, "Shut up! Don't fucking think about it." That is the only answer you're gonna get. Like that is <laughs> that it's uh, it's kind of funny. Like it's almost like um, a more brutal version of like uh, I would say like something like Roger Rabbit, where it's like, "Oh, these pe these animal people just kind of exist in this universe, and we." We basically have no, uh, like, we basically have, um, have no reason for it, and no one cares. So the character of Flint Sparks, the la that's his last name, Flint is a, br is basically like a German Shepherd who does know how to use a gun, he's a brilliant, he's a brutal and brilliant assassin, and... The comic really li uh, lays into that this is a John Wick parody. Like, there are lines in here that are straight up from uh, John Wick. Even little scenes here and there that are like, yeah. Especially at the end of this three-issue book. Yes, this is a th uh, this first volume is uh, three issues. The comic goes out of its way to really hammer home that, hey... Do not take this comic seriously. Just enjoy the fun, bloody, uh, the fun and guts. And fun and guts there are. There is some brutal deaths in here. Um, and it's really paired well with this very cartoony artwork. Um, like, it's it, it, this very, like, uh, it almost reminds me, weirdly enough, it kind of reminds me of Rocco's Modern Life. I don't know. Maybe that's just a me thing. I don't know. I don't think that was the intention. But it really does feel like. Yeah, this thing really, uh, like, um, this thing really, um, took some inspiration from cartoon animation. If there was any flaw, I would say, with this comic, is that I feel like this, uh, this comic only ran for the first, uh, the first volume's three issues long, and it try it really hammers home that, oh no, we're not done, volume two is going to be another, is going to be a four-issue miniseries, like I said, I got that one as well, so I'll review that sometime in the future, but I do feel like it really 
creatively it cre and i imagine like in the next volume they'll uh, it creatively expand further but it really just plays on the joke a little too hard that this is a john wick parody like there are some things where it just feels like did you just guy did you guys just watch the movie and just copy the script because it, it there are some moments just line changes here and there where it's exactly like the movie and even i was like all right i get it it's a john wick parody but i do have uh, i do have my expectation that vol uh, that while this is and yes i do temper the fact that it is a parody um and i think volume two is going to be a little more original with the an expansion on the idea so i'm not going to really hold it against them that yes that is the intention the whole time for this comic but yeah having said all that i had a lot of fun with this chris thank you for sending me this comic um yeah i recommend good boy it's a good comic Anyway, so there you go, guys. That is my review for Good Boy Volume 1. Uh, once again, if you've read it, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of it. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.